Hi, my name is Jennifer. I'm the Customer Relationship Manager of Nutra Worldwide, Inc. I came to you for a suggestion. Sure. How can I help? We have a sector which is dedicated to customer service. Consequently, maintaining a healthy customer relation is crucial. Lately, we are finding it increasingly difficult to keep the customers updated regularly. This is making customer collaboration more and more difficult. Our IT, marketing, and sales team have already implemented Salesforce. So I wonder if the time has come for our team also to start using Salesforce. I think implementing Salesforce and training your team on it will be a brilliant idea. Collaborating with customers can be a daunting task. Using social media sites such as Twitter and Facebook can cause public exposure problems, which are best kept confidential. Yes, that is what I was going to say next. Using social media has proved to be disastrous, so that's one path I'm reluctant to take. In such cases, you should seriously consider Salesforce communities. It offers companies the ability to collaborate in a controlled and a secure environment. The ability to create groups can help organizations to discuss problems, post articles, and share information faster than ever. The community can be further branded and customized using Visual Force and the Site Studio to match the look and feel of the company's website. Communities also offer flexible login packages such as named user and pooled logins which can help save money over conventional portals built using other platforms. Awesome! Let's understand more about Salesforce communities. Creating a new community. Remember the following points. The first step in creating a community is checking to see if your organization has communities licenses. Go to Company Profile and click on Company Information. Before you start setting up your community, it is best to make a plan. Decide whether the target audience is customers or partners and if the community content will be public or private. Estimate the size of your community to determine license requirements. So now we're in Salesforce in the setup area. So I clicked on setup and then over on the left hand side scrolled down to communities, then clicked on all communities. Then when I scroll up, I can click the new community button. On this page, I'm going to be asked to choose a template. So there are different templates for different use cases. The most basic template is this one here, the Salesforce tabs plus Visual Force. There are others such as the Koa, Napili, and Kokua templates. For demonstration purposes, I'm just going to choose the Salesforce tabs plus Visual Force. So now I'm going to name it. I'm going to call this the Customer Community and click on Create Community. Once the community has been created, you'll see the success message here. So now you can click on the Go to Community Management button. So now you're at the Customer Community Administration page. The next step we'll discuss is adding members. Remember the following key points when adding members. Members are added to the community by using profiles and permission sets. You can remove or grant access for groups of users. All users assigned to a profile or permission set will become members. You can also grant access to a subset of the profile. You can also enforce a membership policy. Click All Communities and Manage to add members. Select the user profiles you want to add. To remove a profile, select it and click Remove. So what these steps talk about is enabling access to the community through the different profiles in Salesforce. Communities users are sort of a strange area of Salesforce where they're a contact but they're also a user and they have access to the community. As part of that very special process, you need to enable the different profiles that are going to have access to the community. So let's go into Salesforce and see this firsthand. So here I'm logged into Salesforce and I'm looking at a contact record. Now let's say that I want to give Jane Smith access to my community. I've created a contact record for her. So now I click Manage External User and click on Enable Customer User. 
Once I've done this, I can start filling out the, the different fields for the specific user. For example, email, username, and nickname are all required fields, just as a new user would be for the internal use of Salesforce. Over here on the right hand side, you'll need to choose the correct license type. Now, I have a lot of license types enabled in this Salesforce org because it's for demonstration purposes. However, yours most likely will say Customer Community. So at this point, you can click Customer Community and then choose the Customer Community user. Once you've done that, you can simply click Save and the user will receive an email notifying them that a new user has been created on their behalf. The next topic we'll discuss is Community, Preferences, Keep in mind the following key points when accessing emails, preferences, and pages. You can change the email sender information, chatter email, and templates can be customized for your community. You can perform customizations in the user interface or the network object. Click All Communities, click Manage, click Administration, and Emails. Enter custom values for the email sender's name and address to replace the default values. Customize the display in the Chatter email footer. Select Send a Welcome Email to be sent to users when they are added to the community. And you can also customize any default templates. So let's look at these preferences in Salesforce. Now I'm over here in the community setup, and you can see I've clicked on Preferences. Now I have the ability to enable nickname display. I can also allow login access to the community without a username and password, so allow access without a login. I can also enable private messages, so this gives users the ability to send messages back and forth. I can also choose whether or not that I want to use custom Visual Force error pages, and I can choose to see all settings in community management. Now down here, we also have the option to let users flag different content. So if there's a conversation that's inappropriate, for example, members can flag that for moderation. We also have the ability to turn on or turn off reputation levels, as well as enable knowledgeable people on topics. We also have the ability here to limit the maximum file size that's going to be uploaded to the community. We can also restrict specific file types. For example, perhaps we don't want pictures being uploaded to the community, but we do want to allow PDFs. So we can simply put in the PDF extension there, and Salesforce will enforce that restriction. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.